at all costs, we will give you the eye test that you need. You see what it is. You see who it is. It's your boy Dame. Subscribe to your boy Damian Harkless. Appreciate those thus far. I told you this page was going to get deep. I told you it was going to get grimy. And I told you we was going to be them eye test boys. You got Kawhi Leonard. You got Paul George. By demand. One of my subscribers requested this video. And I try to deliver on all of them. I haven't delivered on all of them. But y'all can be patient with your boy. You know it's life outside of this tube and this camera. But I'm here to do what it do. You got Paul. You got Kawhi. Two elite small forwards. Two elite wing players. Two very similar players. Play both sides of the ball. It's only right that we compare them. Many people will place Paul and Kawhi as the tier two of elite wing players because you got the Brian Bonds and you got the Durants. And then right below that, most people will categorize Kawhi and Paul as the tier two of the wings. Me, I wouldn't have no gripe if you put them in tier one right with them. Just one, one B type motherfuckers. But it is what it is. So without further ado, we're going to compare the two. Let's get it popping. First thing I'm going to start with is scoring. Now, all these categories will be close. When you have players of this magnitude, elite 25 plus scoring players, potential MVP candidates, you're always going to have very close categories. We're not comparing legends to bums over here. So scoring, for me, I got Paul George. And the reason being, Paul George is a pure scorer. He's he come into the league as a scorer at Fresno State. He was a scorer at in high school. He was a scorer. He was always a scorer his whole career. So the skill set and the magnitude in which he scored never deterred. Whereas Kawhi Leonard just kind of got this notoriety as a person who puts the ball in the hoop consistently, can't get it done. If you notice, Kawhi came in a game jumper a little bit flat. Didn't really have an offensive array, no post game really. He was really a spot up shooter who couldn't really shoot that well and a defender. Great rebounder as well. He was great as far as the intangibles come. But when it came to the pure natural score, the element of basketball, which I love, <laughs> Paul George had that gifted out the bando. So scoring, I'd be inclined to take Paul. If you were to take Kawhi as far as scoring, I'm not mad at you. This was one of the best years I've seen for a superstar in Kawhi Leonard as far as carrying his team, getting buckets when need be. He was a, a certified bucket getter this year, and I would say last year he was too, but this was the year where his role was more prolific, had heavy duty, and they were relying on him pretty much the whole season to get the bucket. Aldridge didn't come through like he was supposed to, so it was just pretty much the Kawhi show. Now, with that being said, I slightly give Paul the scoring edge. It's not by a lot. As I transition to shooting, who's the better shooter? Again, Paul was the more natural shooter. So this is this what begs the question, why is Kawhi in the category if Paul was the more gifted natural player? And I would say work ethic. Work ethic ethic you don't get this good from scratch without working your ass off Kawhi Leonard is a workaholic so when we talk about shooting it would almost seem easy to give it to Paul back in the day but now not so much mid-range I got Kawhi Leonard easily as far as post play as far as just triple threat jab step mid-range as far as getting to his sweet spots and you know he trained with Bean this summer when you train with Bean it's three things you get you get footwork, you get a mid-range game, and you, you find yourself putting your back to the basket, shimmy and fade away and all motherfuckers. So mid-range, I got Kawhi. Three ball, it's close. Because Paul George always could shoot, man. If you go back to his high school days, I actually, I actually was in the Golden League with Paul George, so I actually got to see him play up close and personal. He's a young buck. He had a jumper then, 17. <laughs> so, Paul always could shoot the three ball. I would say off the dribble, I got Paul George as a shooter. But I would say spot up, toe in the line, 
I got Kawhi. So either way, for me, I, I guess three-point shooting overall, I would take Paul George. But it's very close because when Kawhi is set, he not missing that motherfucker. Now, he does struggle off the dribble shooting from range. He's always had that kind of push shot to where it, he doesn't have range. Whereas Paul George got the flick of the wrist, can shoot from 30, 35 if he wanted to. Can shoot right off the dribble, off a, a double between the legs, step back type pull up. He can shoot in a variety of ways. So, outside shooting, I would give it to Paul just by hair. I've seen Kawhi do so much this year to where he's, he's exceeded my expectations by a milestone. By a mile, excuse me. So... I didn't expect him to make shots where he was making the motherfucker. So, if you gave Kawhi the best shooter of these two, I wouldn't be mad at you. He certainly got the mid-range to me. Now, we'll transition to defense. Who's the better defender? Like I said earlier, these two both play both sides of the ball, and they both play it well. But to me, I got the claw, man. He gets his hands in on everything. He has the biggest hands in the league, I would think, especially as far as proportionate. 6'9 with Shaq hands. So he gets his hands on everything. He's always going to be high in the league in steals. He's always going to be high as far as guards for blocks. Look at that shot by PG. But as far as defense, Kawhi has been known to guard one through four. So if you're Durant, if you're LeBron, if you're a, he can guard an Aldridge if he wanted to. If you're a Russell Westbrook, if you're a Chris Paul, Popovich doesn't limit the assignments in which Kawhi gets. He gets everybody. And he still gets them even with the heavy duty that he has to carry with the Spurs burden that they have now. Whereas Paul George always been a good defender. But now I feel like he's detracting a little bit due to his workload. Now some superstars you get, they get the workload and they tend to take a couple of more plays off on D. They tend to not be the defender that they were. You a la Jimmy Butler now. You pay attention to Jimmy Butler now that he averaged 22, 23. Motherfucker don't strap up on D as much. So for those same reasons and the fact that Kawhi is just linky. He gets his hands on everything. His IQ is great as far as defense. Paul's is too, but Kawhi to me is the perfect standard defender. The perfect type of defender that I want at my wing player. Long, agile, quick, not too slow. And can guard. So, Paul, you're there on defense. You're just not the claw. <laughs> Great defender, you're just not the claw. So, defense, I got the claw. Rebounding, I got the claw. To me, the best small forward rebounder in the game as far as boxing out fundamentally and getting up there. He out-rebounded LeBron in the finals where he got his finals MVP. And if you don't box him out, he's prone to get a tip dunk on your shit. He's... He's a pest on the boards. He can get 15 boards with the quickness if he wanted to. Paul George is a great rebounder too. But then when you talk about intangibles, which I'm also going to give to Kawhi, you have to talk about boxing out. You have to talk about being in the right place. You have to talk about wanting to rebound. It's a difference between being a good rebounder and being thirsty for a rebound. Kawhi is thirsty. Like I said, he's one of those garbage men type players to where loose balls, you don't, He's going to get on the floor, rebound, and he's going to box out, and he's going to grit and grind for the tough rebound. So as far as intangibles along with rebounding, so you can double up those categories for me. I got Kawhi again. Now, skill set, this is where I go to Paul. I feel like Paul was the more natural, <coughs> excuse me, the more natural basketball player here. Some people out the wound are just blessed with that dexterity, that footwork, that skill. Like, Paul has better ball handles for me when it comes to Kawhi. He got the stiffness with the quickness, you feel me? So he can get open and get to where he needs to be, but aesthetically it's never really pleasing. Whereas Paul George could hit you with a step back. Paul George could hit you with the crossover. Paul George has an array of moves. Even in his post play, his moves look better. So I transition to post. Even though Paul's post look better, I got Kawhi. Because you have to factor effectiveness. It's not always about aesthetics. If you watch my AI vs. Kyrie, Kyrie wiggles look better, but Iverson shit work more. That's the same scenario when it comes to Kawhi. Kawhi in the post is very strong. Stronger than Paul George, in my opinion. 
And when he's on a littler man, even a Paul who's littler in size, he can get to where he wants to in the post and he can get that shot up. So post play, though I would say I would say Paul probably has more moves in the post and he'll probably um pull out and get to the triple threat, which I consider still a post, depending on where you're at, and bust a move. Skillfully, I got Paul, but as far as effectiveness, I got Kawhi. So post play, I would have to warn it to Kawhi. Tough shots, I would have to give to Kawhi. Just, I don't know where where this came from this year, but this year, he's a tough shot maker. And, you know, in my bias, I'm accredited credit it to what Mahamba did, helped him out on some to where he got this, and he can just shoot right over you mid-range all day. So tough shots, I got Kawhi. Passing to me is a wash. Both these players are good at passing. Score first, pass later type guys. They can get their team involved, but they're not looking to do it. So it's a wash. Either way, it's cool. I, I probably, if I had to choose, it would it would probably be Paul, just because aesthetic wise, like like if you look at players with the eye test, a general move doesn't look the same. Like. Paul's cross, just regular right to left cross, doesn't look like Kawhi's cross. So if you, if, assuming that they are equal in effectiveness, I will turn to aesthetics and how it looks. So passing, I would probably say Paul, maybe by a, by a hair, just because it probably looks a little bit better. There's no swag in Kawhi's game, so passing, I'll take that clutch. Clutch is where it gets good, cause both these players are extremely clutch in my book. And Kawhi was more clutch last year, definitely, for me, even though Paul was very clutch as well. And when I say clutch, it's fourth quarter scenarios. You have to give them the ball. You have to anchor your team. All the big shots, when necessary, you're involved. So Paul was very clutch. Kawhi was even more clutch. So I would have to factor it to a historical standpoint. Kawhi has always been clutch. However, he's been prone to miss free throws in big situations. I'm the type to never forget. I'll never forget him missing them two free throws game six against Miami, which allowed Ray Allen to hit that three and prevent the Spurs from winning another ring. So, And that's not just the first time where he's been missing free throws in clutch critical situations. A few times I've seen Kawhi choke up in that aspect, whereas I've never really seen Paul do that. I've always seen Paul come to play in the clutch. He had some critical heat series even this year he was very clutch in that first round killing shit so my clutch goes to Paul George I trust Paul to get the bucket and create a better looking shot than Kawhi though Kawhi has proven me wrong so much last year so it'll even be tough doing that but clutch for me I'm taking PG now what other categories can we hit them with? I guess it all comes down to the overall category. Now, overall, I'm going to have to... T oh, driving, finishing at the basket, attacking the basket. It's pretty even. I would say Kawhi gets it by a hair because he has those big arms and those lengthy... That lengthy size to where once he gets in that area, he can literally just palm the ball and, like, put it up with his right hand. He has, like, this awkward push shot when he gets to the post. I wouldn't call it a floater, but the shit is damn near autopilot. So, attacking the basket, I would slightly have Kawhi. And he's more aggressive, too. Paul's more prone to shoot. So, I would have Kawhi in that aspect. Overall, man, I got Kawhi Leonard, the claw. To me, he's right up there with LeBron and Kawhi. I mean, LeBron and um, Durant. Now, PG, to me, would be up there as well. I feel like if he maybe just puts a little bit more effort into his defense like he used to, I could feel like he's kind of lagged from that aspect. I think he's a great scorer, and offensively, it's not too much he can't do. But I just feel like if he fine-tuned it a little bit more, or not even fine-tuned it, if he just turned up a little bit more on defense, I feel like this year he's lagged off more than any. And, and, and it happens a lot. LeBron lagged off this year on defense, as you can tell. But, like, the Kawhis and the Durants, they, they turned it up to another level. So for me to give you that advantage over those type of players, defense got to be there, baby. And, Paul, you got great defense, but that load might be too much for you to play on a day-to-day -day basis, whereas Kawhi plays defense every day, every play. Best player on the court, he's guarding them. So, yeah, overall, for that reason, defense and his scoring ability not being too far behind, pause. I got the claw. I got Kawhi. I feel this dude is probably top five in the league right now. 
Whereas Paul may be top eight, <laughs> top nine right there. You feel me? So let me know what y'all got. Paul or Kawhi? Set shot, Kawhi. Off the dribble, Paul. It's the eye test, baby. Off ball, Kawhi. You feel me? One on one, maybe Paul. It's real close, man. Eye test. Who you got? Kawhi, Paul. It's dang.